Hey everyone, 2020 is the first year where Samsung has launched light versions of their flagships. However, where the S10 Lite was launched around a year after the S10 series first premiered, the S20 series has their light version being launched now around six months later. Samsung is calling it the Samsung Galaxy S20 Fan Edition or the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. So what exactly does that mean for users and have they ironed out any of the issues from the regular S20 phones? I'm Angie for GSM Marina and these are the key features of the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE. Open it up and you'll see a design, well, like current Samsung A-series phones. There's a large screen with a small centered hole punch on the front and a candy bar-like camera bump on the back. The texture is more matte than the original S20 and the S20 FE comes in a wide range of colors. There's cloud lavender, mint, navy, white, red, and orange. We've got the cloud navy version here. As this is the light version of the phone, you'll notice some corners were cut when it comes to durability. It still has IP68 rated protection, which is great, but the front display has Gorilla Glass 3 instead of 6, and the back panel is made of plastic. Honestly, it's not that big of an issue, but it's disappointing considering this phone is launching at around 700 bucks. You should also know that the phone can be a bit of a fingerprint magnet, so getting a case will help beyond just durability. Speaking of fingerprints, the under display fingerprint reader is an optical one, which is slightly faster than the ultrasonic one on the S20 flagships. The FE's dimensions are actually more akin to the S20 Plus than the smaller S20. It's a tad wider with slightly more noticeable bezels. That said, it's still a comfortable phone to hold. Not to mention, the screen has barely any curve to it, so fans of flat displays can rejoice. The screen itself is a 6.5 inch Super AMOLED panel with a Full HD resolution and a 120 Hz refresh rate. It's colorful, bright, and large, so this definitely looks like a promising media consumption experience. It also has stereo speakers, which means you're covered as far as sound is concerned. The FE also has an Exynos 990 chipset if you're getting the 4G only version, and the Snapdragon 865 if you're getting the 5G version. The Snapdragon is known to be 10% to 20% faster than the Exynos, and it's also more power efficient, so that's something to consider if you're wondering which one to get. The S20 FE has a 4,500 mAh battery, which is the same as the S20 Plus. Considering the two phones have the same chipsets and similarly sized screens, we're expecting that endurance shouldn't be too different. Unfortunately, we won't be able to compare apples to apples because we have the Exynos S20 Plus and the Snapdragon version of the S20 FE. As far as charging is concerned, there's a 15 watt Quick Charge 2.0 bundled charger, which isn't really mind blowing in 2020. The phone has Android 10 with Samsung's One UI 2.5 on top. In classic Galaxy style, you have a ton of options, from navigation gestures to dark mode to an edge panel. On this version of One UI, Samsung has improved wireless dex mode and made Wi-Fi connectivity a little bit smarter. In the coming months, they should roll out Android 11 too. Where this phone differs slightly more from its predecessors is the camera setup. Sure, it has the same 12 megapixel main camera with OIS and a similar, though smaller, 12 megapixel ultrawide sensor. Where they really differ is the telephoto. It's an 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 3 times optical zoom and OIS in contrast to the regular S20's 64 megapixel telephoto camera, which relies on digital cropping to achieve 3 times zooming. The selfie camera on the S20 FE might actually be better because it's a 32 megapixel shooter with a brighter f2.0 aperture. Though, unlike the S20 Plus, there's no autofocus, so it might be a bit of a toss-up. That said, specs aren't everything, so it remains to be seen how different the performances between these two camera setups really are. With the S20 FE, you're getting a large display, a big battery, a flagship chipset, and even a good camera setup if we're looking at the specs. Now, there is one issue though. This phone is launching at a time when the prices of the original S20 series are going down. So effectively what's happening is that the FE's biggest competition might be the Galaxy S20 series. So how do they stack up and which one is more worth it? Well, that's something that we're gonna explore in the full review. Stay tuned everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you guys next time.